Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and I'm back for class two of our embroidered crazy quilt. So class two, little bit more sewing, less embroidering. So what we're gonna do in class two is we are gonna take those embroidered designs that you created, and we're going to make a shape around it, draw that, trim it out, put it on a foundation, and then stitch and flip all of our awesome fabrics right onto the foundation. So you can see here is an example of a crazy quilt block that I put together so that you can see the backside. So you see we're using a piece of muslin to um, secure our stitches down. So we're gonna learn how to do crazy quilt piecing. It's almost like a foundation paper piece, but instead of the paper, we're using fabric that doesn't get removed afterwards. So let's get started. We got a lot to do and a little time to do it in. <laughs> After your embroideries are complete, you're gonna wanna take the stabilizers off the back. And I did that on both of these examples. And I wanna show you something because some of you will ask me questions like, um, well, I can't use a cutaway stabilizer with my quilts because it doesn't ever leave the quilt. Well, it does soften up through time and I was able to trim this out pretty close and I'm gonna micro stipple on this so you, it's not even gonna be really something that you notice. Let's look at this little um, bunny one. So on the bunny one, you can see on the back that I wasn't able to remove as much stabilizer back here, but I'm not really alarmed about that because once again, I'm gonna do some heavy quilting on here and we're not even gonna notice. So there is, let me show you some of the crazy quilt blocks that I already made. And we'll start with this little guy. This is one of the deers. And um, I decided that I was gonna try to do like a odd um, shape around this. So I just like make these shapes up as I look at them. I'm like, eh, I think I'll have an angle here. Eh, I'll have an angle here. So um, what I'm recommending that you do, and I'm going to show you that in just a minute, is that you actually use a ruler and a heat um, vanishing pen just to kind of draw the initial shape. And then that way, if you don't like it, you can get rid of it and try again. Um, I, I already quilted one of these pieces as i told you already this is a quilt as you go project so we're going to go ahead and just quilt these babies like we were making a little pot holder but on this one i have an even sided shape and because this is a crazy quilt design i want you to consider doing a little bit of even numbers and a little bit of odd numbers that would be uh hexagons versus pentag pentagons um please don't make some stop signs. I just think that's too many, you know, sides to have to cover. And also a triangle might not look as good. And then of course a square is a square. So um, I'm just recommending that you stick to five-sided or six-sided pieces when you're trimming up your block. And then you can also see here, there's another piece. I kinda, and I also take into consideration, obviously, the size of the embroidery design that's in there. Here's another wider one. And then this one was pretty tall. But at the end of the day, when these go together, I think, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. So let me put away my other blocks and we're gonna work on the bunny. So I'll just put the bunny right there. So here's my block. And obviously, like I said, no four-sided sides, please. <laughs> but I think I am going to do maybe a little hexagon with this guy. So I'm going to leave a plenty of seam allowance around here, and I'm just going to draw a line like that. Then I'm going to come down here and draw another line. I'm about an inch away from my embroidered piece there. So there's another line. And let's go down here and do another. Okay, so that's three sides. Looks like I've got another one to do over here. I don't want it to look even. We're not making this for English paper piecing. And now let's just finish up here. All right, I have nothing to change, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim. Now, theoretically, my blue lines there are going to be my um, stitching lines. So I'm gonna add a quarter inch seam allowance around the entire shape. 
and I'll go back and use my ruler and I'm lining my quarter inch up against my blue line. And I'm just gonna make my cut. And some of these pieces that I'm cutting off, I'm gonna save for when we do a special project with some additional embroidery. That's coming in another portion of this class. All right, so there's our bunny. So I'm using, oopsie get over there. So I'm using this line and this line. And then finally, this one. All right, so we have a bunny and a bear. Some of the easiest cutting you're gonna do is gonna be preparing your strips of your 10 quarter inch cuts of material. Now in the video, I had actually used a half a yard of different materials and that's simply because I didn't know how much it was gonna take to make the quilt. But just cut various widths. Uh, think about like maybe an uh, inch and a half, then two and a half, or three to inch to even four inch strips. Just as long as, you know, they're a little bit random and that will make your block look a little bit crazier. Once you've cut out your little odd shapes, whether they're a five-sided shape or a six-sided shape, you're going to want to remember to um, put them onto your muslin foundation blocks. Now you're going to cut your muslin or your other more economy fabric, you're going to cut that into 12 and a half inch squares. When you lay them on your cutting table, you're going to lay them out in a diamond pattern like you see here on the left side of the screen. Then you're gonna take your odd little shape and put it right in the center. Now, when you put it in the center, you also wanna make sure that you don't wanna have any straight edges lining up with the straight edges of your diamond. And then we're just gonna start the crazy patch assembly, kind of going round like a log cabin where you're gonna lay it down, you're gonna flip it, and then you're gonna add your next piece and you just keep continuing this until you get the entire foundation piece covered. Let's have a little look in here. So I've cut all of my half yards of material into various width strips. So I have some that are about an inch and a half, I have some that are about two and three quarters, and I have others that are over four inches. Nothing is really accurate, and I'm looking for a variety of grays, yellows, whites, or multicolor yellow and gray prints as I build around my, my design. Um, there's lots of like really fun things in here, but I also wanted to have some solid like fabric so I could play around when we get to the quilting portion. So let's just get started. This, this works a little bit. If any of you have ever made a log cabin on a foundation pieced block, it's working a little bit like that. So uh, let's have a look over here at what I'm using. I'm using my Bernina 880 Plus and I have the 97 D foot on. I'm not really doing a quarter inch seam, but it seems to work for this application. I'm just guiding my little pieces right down that foot and it's working for me. I have a light gray thread that I'm using in the top, but in the bobbin, I have loaded a darker thread. And that's because ultimately, I wanna see those stitches on the backside of my foundation piece because later in another segment, we're going to be doing upside down sewing. And rather you have a machine that can do a chain stitch, that's like a serger or a cover stitch machine, or if you wanna thread a pearl 
uh, rayon in your special bobbin case, or in this case, we're using our 880, we'll adjust it for fat thread, we'll be able to do our decorative stitches with this thick, fancy thread. But that means that we work upside down because the decorative portion comes from the bobbin. So that's why I want to put a darker thread in there. But for this piece, we're just going to use a regular straight stitch. We've made no adjustments to the stitch whatsoever. And we're just going to stitch and flip until we cover this muslin base. You can start on whatever side that you want, um, but we're just going to build around. Like, so I'm going to sew a piece and I'm going to pick a strip. I'm just going to start with my skinny little gray and yellow piece like this. So I'm going to start and I'm just going to line up my raw edges and I'm going to extend my piece past my shimmery pink fabric here. So I'm just going to put that right there. I'm going to line my foot up just like that and I'm going to place my presser foot down and I'm just going to stitch. And I'm going to stitch a little bit off of the pink material. Then I'm going to use my thread cutter. And then I have longer longer bladed scissors than I normally use and that's just going to help me trim my strips a little bit better than some little small snips. So I'm just going to use the whole blade to cut that and now I'm going to finger press this piece over. And you can still see a little bit of my drawn line. Don't worry about that. That's going to press out and um, we're also going to do some decorative stitching there so we're not going to see it anyway. Now, I do like to eliminate bulk, and even though I trimmed my piece, if I want, I'm gonna go clockwise around the shape. So my next piece is gonna go on right here, but I'm just gonna trim this off just a little bit and just cut that, just like that. Really, don't get too particular with this. It's gonna look beautiful no matter what technique you use. Bunnies are cute in the daisies. So I'm picking my daisy fabric next. And don't forget, we're gonna take this piece and make sure that we set it and start sewing right up to that piece that we just put on there. And now I'm gonna start. And now we're gonna stitch right until we get off of the edge of that pink. I'm gonna cut. And then I'm gonna finger press this over, just like that. And then I'm gonna trim, trying to follow that straight line with my pink material that's right there. And now it's time to add another piece. It's time to put a lighter piece on now. I'm going for this yellow. It was so much fun picking out all of these fun fabrics for this quilt. The pink or the the yellow and gray, you know that is Pantone's color of the year by the way. All right, let's lower our presser foot and get started. Okay. Time to cut. trim and press. Now, sometimes you can destroy your fingers if you keep finger pressing. So that's why I use a little um, item like this. It's a finger pressing tool and this comes from Nifty Notions. We carry these here at Bernina of Naperville. And so I'm gonna try to save my fingers by using this tool. But there's also the Hera markers, and those are also cool for like, if you need to quilt a straight line and you don't wanna make a mark, these little guys will just bend those little fibers down and actually be something where you can see a straight line. It's also, you can use these for pressing as well because you just kind of drag it along the seam like this. But this is the one I'm gonna use, and then this is just a Hera marker if you need a heavier hand. This one's a little versatile because you have a little pointy point point thing on the end. So just a little cute little set if you're if you're interested. So now I'm gonna turn this over like this 
And then I'm just gonna take my piece and move it and slide it and make a crease. Just like that. And now I'm gonna take my scissors again and I'm gonna just trim this even with the side. And now I think, let's see here, I've got yellow, gray and yellow, yellow. Might be time to put a darker gray piece on this side. And I just happen to have some of this Krista Watson from Good Vibes collection here. And we're gonna use that and we're gonna cover this area here. Cut. And then trim. And press. Are you impressed with this finger presser? <laughs> I can't help it. I love puns. All right, I'm just gonna work my way around. Thought I'd give it a go with a little bit of white this time. forget this works better with the flat surface which is why I'm using my free arm here got to add a little bit of Tula And then I'm also going to trim this down a little bit. This is going to add a little bit too much bulk to my project. There we go. There we go. That looks good. And then my finger pressing tool. Perfect. Love it. All right, so my next piece is going to go right here. So I'm going to want to give this a little bit of a trim. But I'm going to go ahead and just trim, go around, enjoy some fun music, and I'll see you back when I'm finished. gotten all of our areas covered for our foundation it's time to square it up so I do that by turning it over and there you can see why I wanted my dark lines to show up because they're very bold and I'll be able to see them as we work upside down on this so I'm just gonna trim and sometimes I just leave about an eighth of an inch larger than my piece of material it's just, you know, there is a little bit of shrinkage on this. I cut these to 12 and a half, but I can tell you they're going to shrink down a little bit because we're going to do a lot of quilting on these. Um, I want this to be a stress-free project. So you know what? Not everything has to measure exactly 12 inches or 12 and a half inches. Just remember that. Yeah, look at that. Now, have a look up here. I didn't cover that little wee piece there. That is okay. Don't even worry about that. But 
I think this is super cute. I love the different variations of the widths of my material that I cut. I get to see a lot of um, gray and uh, bright yellow, which is what I like. And now in the next segment, you're gonna learn how to do the embellishing, whether it be on the chain stitch, on your cover stitch or your um, serger and cover stitch combo, or maybe some decorative stitches working with bobbin work. Well, I hope you enjoyed this technique. Don't forget, you have eight of them to make and they go by pretty quickly and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget that we have another class coming up, class three, and that one is going to cover the embellishment because traditional crazy quilts are embellished with decorative stitching. So we have a little magic trick in mind for next time. And I wanna show you, do you see the decorative stitching that's done between the blocks there in that heavy black cording? Well, that's rayon cording and it was put through our Bernina L890 overlocker cover stitch machine. Now, don't fret if you don't have one of those machines, but get excited if you do, because we're gonna incorporate that into our project. For those of you that might not have, number one, embroidery, or number two, a cover stitch machine, we also fancied up a block, and that feather stitch, that was done on our Bernina 880 plus or our Bernina 790 plus with bobbin work. So next week is bobbin work and embellishing with a serger. Now, if you like this class session and you wanna see more videos from our channel, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. It's easy, it's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And if you want an alert every time we upload a new video, just like this one, just click the little bell. But in the meantime, get started on your blocks if you haven't started. And otherwise, we'll see you next time.